All right, guys, so here we have an ideal gas problem with a turbine. So we'll just go ahead and draw that out. So we have an entrance and an exit. So the entrance will be on the left and it exits off to the right. And we're gonna just note that we're working with air here. So we're not given anything at the entrance, but at the exit, we're told that the state has a pressure of 200 kilopascals, a temperature the exit of 150 degrees Celsius, a volumetric flow rate of 7,000 liters per second. And we're told that we can use the ideal gas model. So the ideal gas model, once again, if you don't recall, is PV equals MRT. And here we're working with rates. So we're looking for the mass flow rate in kilograms per second, and we're given the volumetric flow rate in liters per second. So we're going to put the dots over the V and the M to indicate that we're working with a rate. And now we just got to rearrange for the mass flow rate since that's what the target is. So the target is M dot, which is going to be equal to the pressure times the volumetric flow rate divided by the gas constant times the temperature. Now, it's pretty simply, we just need to plug and chug. So set this equal to 200 kilopascals on the pressure and that's already in SI so we're good to go the volumetric flow rate is given in liters per second so we have to convert that into SI to make it compatible with the kilopascals so we just convert that into seven meters cubed per second so times seven and then you're going to divide it by the gas constant. Remember the gas constant R is just equal to the universal gas constant divided by the molar mass. Now, as always, the universal gas constant is going to be equal to 8.3143. And you're going to divide it by the molar mass of air, which is 28.93. And that's going to give you approximately 0 0.287. And the unit is kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So we divide by 0 0.287. And once again, we have the unit as kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, and that is SI. And then you're going to multiply it by the temperature. So the temperature we're given here is 150 degrees Celsius. But we do need that in absolute. So we just convert it by adding 273, and we get 423 Kelvin. So 423 Kelvin. And now when you plug all this into a calculator, you should have that your mass flow rate, m dot, is equal to 11.53, and that's going to be in kilograms per second. Now, if you understand how the units work out to kilograms per second, great, you can stop watching. But in case you don't, let me explain it for you. So this 200 is in kilopascals, so we have kilopascals in the numerator. Multiplied by that 7, that 7 holds meters cubed per second. So meters cubed per second. And then on the bottom, we have that 0.287, which holds the unit of kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And then that's multiplied by the temperature, which is just simply Kelvin. Whoops. My apologies for that. So just simply Kelvin on the bottom. And then if you just do some crossing out of units here, you have that Kelvin over here cancels out with the Kelvin over here. And then, I mean, that's pretty much all you can do here. So you got to break down the units even more. So remember that a kilopascal or a pascal is a Newton divided by meters squared because pressure is equal to force divided by area. So let's convert that. So kilopascal would be kilonewton divided by meters squared. Now we have your M3 over a second or meters cubed per second. That can't be broken down, so we're going to leave that as is. And then you divide that by kilojoules per kilogram. So remember a kilojoule or a joule is work, and work is just force times distance. So that's me kilonewtons times distance, which is meters. And that's going to be on the numerator. And then on denominator, you're going to have your uh, kilograms and then you already crossed out the Kelvin on the other side so this is all you're working with right here now you have more stuff that can cancel out so you can cancel out these kilonewtons that cancel out each other and then you can cancel out your meters squared and get rid of that 
exponent, 97 meters per second over meters per kilogram. And then this meter cancels out with this meter. And then you're left with kilograms per second. As you can see, the kilograms is in the denominator of a denominator. So it moves over to the top and the seconds is in a denominator of a numerator. So it moves to the bottom and you're left with kilograms per second, which is your unit.